Hello and welcome back to another exciting Pro Guides video. My name is Karaks and with countless hours of coaching under my belt, I've guided players across all ELOs to new heights. Today we're going to put that expertise to work as we craft a unique low ELO tier list. This tier list is designed to rank champions based on their strength, simplicity and power levels relative to skill level. As a result, you might notice that some of the more challenging yet powerful champions are ranked lower than you'd expect on a high ELO tier list. You may be surprised by a few of those power rankings, but I really encourage you to view them as a general suggestion meant to help you climb the ladder more efficiently with a minimal effort and time investment. To enhance readability and visibility alike, we have also streamlined the number of ranks on our list. So without any further ado, let's dive right into this refreshing take on champion rankings and help you unlock your true potential on the rift. First, let's start with a look at our top lane tier list, and here we have Orn, Malphite and Cho'Gath for our suggested OP picks. To give you some context, we are diving right into some Cho'Gath gameplay. This champion is easy, intuitive and features amazing sustain if you won't drop to any last hits. While going for the hard steel build, you'll also become an unkillable creature that completely takes over fights. Combining your bonus health from hard steel, sunfire and your ultimate ability, your HP pool is inflated brutally. From a synergistic point of view, you're also enhancing your champion's kit as well as your item choices. Do you want to know the secret? Did you know that you can wait to allocate your level 11 skill point to have it function as an instant HP increase? Once you're at level 11, don't just skill your ultimate ability. You can wait for it and mid-combat you can allocate that skill point to achieve an extra chunk of health from your ultimate ability's bonus scaling. Whereas Shogat appears like a meat shield with a need execute ability, our next pick offers you all the tools you need to get a fight started. With On, you have an easy to pilot yet highly impactful champion that can help you survive the days of autofill in the top lane with absolute ease. On really doesn't take much to turn a fight into your favor. Considering that enemies flock together like sheep, you'll have an easy time hitting multiple opponents with your ultimate. Adding to that comes also his feature that you're not required to recall to forge yourself some neat items. Given the nature of games and issues that might arise with the wave states, this can be a true game changer. If that wasn't good enough already, you can also enhance your allies' items by offering them more stats which makes it a tiny tiny bit harder for them to int. To control your inner demon, you can check out our courses over at proguides.com. We can help you with pretty much anything league you can ask for from coaching to custom video content and dedicated courses to get you to the next level. And who knows? Maybe you can find me there too. Having covered the essentials, let's dive into the jungle tier list. Take a moment to pause and examine the rankings before we delve right into our first standout pick. Fiddlesticks is a champion that is often underestimated, but this disrespect can quickly lead to a player's demise. Fiddle expertly combines zone control, simplicity and straightforwardness into a formidable champion. To pilot him effectively, you'll need to master his jungle clear. Once you've conquered the PvE aspect, you can focus on full vision control and strategize the best flanks to unleash your ultimate ability right into the enemy team. While this might sound a little daunting, you really don't have to worry about that. Just mastering the ultimate ability alone and the flank possibilities will have a significant impact on the enemy team. In the same vein as the often disregarded fiddlesticks, we have another pick that shares a similar theme. Evelyn is a true terror to face and forces the enemy team to coordinate more closely. You might be tempted to dismiss her by just suggesting that the enemy team will buy control wards, but let's just be very honest here. How often does this actually happen? Some people also may argue that early ganking junglers outshine Evelyn. But who is to say that she can't gank early? Depending on your map awareness, putting a skill into a lower level 3 could secure a kill or force a flash. And with your first ideal reset, Sorcerer's Boots can further amplify your proactive playmaking capabilities. That wraps up the jungle and opens the gates for our mid lane tier list. Again, we focus on easy to pilot, high stat and highly impactful champions that basically get away with murder in the lower elos, whereas in high elos they'd be struggling a lot more. For the first pick though, we have a champion that abuses Rough Ages and therefore is a no brainer pick regardless of the elo you're playing in. With Cassiopeia, the only thing you have to be able to do is spam your buttons. Road of Ages and Archangel 
staff will do the rest for you. Can't die, can't run out of resources, has access to the most annoying sustain item during the laning phase and the damage is linked to her mana pool, which as I said literally cannot run out. Also, don't worry, even with the slight increase in catalyst price from some time ago, you'll really be more than just fine. Unless they pick a Nivea and well then you'll be the one crying. As we already mentioned the bird, we might as well just look into her. Anivia is one of those god tier tier 1 protectors whose primary goal is to keep this tower alive at all costs. She is also able to stall games for a lot of extra time giving her zone control and AoE damage. And as you can pretty much guess, she also uses the same broken items that Cassiopeia does. Rod of Ages and Archangel Staff. And who would have guessed that this combo removed most of the skill required to pilot certain champions. Infinite HP and mana do sound quite good in my books. Maybe it will be nerfed in some time, but until that happens, make sure to abuse it on any champion that's strong with it, and in this case, Anivia. Leaving Rod of Ages and Archangel staff behind us, we can finally move to the AD carry tier. But even here, we are not safe from mages. But before we take a look at them, we are going to give Jinx some airtime. With the recent changes, she's lost a bit of AD, but nothing too severe. You'll be able to still farm up and get that one fight in which you'll absolutely pop off with your reset mechanic. All it takes is just one mistake by literally anyone on the enemy team, and you're either back in the game or a about to end it. But there are also a few other champions that might end you on your way there quite a few times and coincidentally both of those champions are part of our OP tier. Carthus and Seraphine. Whereas Carthus offers value while being alive and dead, Seraphine loves to participate in fights from multiple screens away. One focuses on killing everyone while dying in the process, and the other one loves to provide allies with powerful healing, shielding, and crowd control next to clutch burst damage. If you are more interested in a micro-intensive champion that will always have value, then Carthus is going to be your elo gainer of choice. But if sitting back while relaxing and spending half of your time watching your favorite streamer is kind of your thing, then Seraphine will offer you the best value as her cooldowns are quite long compared to a laning peer. Death and Carnage or cute uvu sounds. What's going to be your pick? Last but surely not the least, we are moving to the support tier and here we differentiate between three different support archetypes. Engage supports, enchanter supports or aggressive lane dominant pressure supports. For the engage supports we have Blitzcrank. This rusty golem has always been the nightmare of AD carries. Almost as if they were magnetic, they're attracting your hook and then get grabbed to certain death. This champion is easy to play, highly impactful and absolutely deadly upon fulfilling his job. On the flip side, however, he might also get you killed in the process while having a little bit of trouble hitting the right target with the hook. If you find yourself having some trouble hitting any hook, you can use your champion's natural pressure to force the enemy into moving into certain patterns, the so-called zigzag movements. As you're getting closer, using your movement speed steroid, they are forced to maintain that weird movement. Eventually, you'll catch up or they'll be forced to use their summoner spells in order to dodge the hook from an undodgeable angle. Alternatively, you can also abuse that hack slash to force the enemy champions into terrible spots or generally get creative with your proactive place on the map. From applying pressure by getting closer to the enemy champion or simply hiding in the fog of war, we are now moving over to absolute dominance with sheer damage. Zyra has always been a thorn in the sides of many bot laners. This champion's damage is brutal and to achieve absolute dominion over lane, you just have to keep throwing your spells into the enemy's face. To make sure that you're also using the right skill order, you want to make sure that grasping roots is the first spell to be maxed out. The additional time the enemy spends rooted is just essential for how your champion deals the most DPS as well as providing ample time for your allies to get close enough. Upon completing Leandri's anguish, you'll also tear apart an entire enemy team on your own as every single plant of yours becomes more than just a tickle fiend. If none of the previous playstyles will Really suit what you want to do, maybe assisting your allies is. With Milio, you have someone that can do amazingly well in just that regard. He can cleanse allies from pretty much any type of crowd control apart from knockups, extend their range, provide them with shields, movement speed, and bonus damage on hit. By getting Shirelli as your first item, you can double down on that speedy nature and constantly catch people. His laning is also quite potent. Just think about the bonus damage on hit, the shielding, summon area, and scorch. While Milio's busted attack, you might as well just pick him constantly.
constantly or otherwise just remove him with a ban. That wraps up our low yellow tier list. I hope you enjoyed the new format and I'd be delighted to hear your thoughts about the new approach in the comments below. See you soon.